Uh, you're the chair of the National Obesity Forum. Mm -hmm. What's your view on where we are right now uh, with obesity in this country? Well, we're in a tragic situation. We have, and you've well explained in your piece there, we have millions of people who are either overweight and certainly many millions who are obese. And that has got huge implications for everybody, for the NHS, for production, for manufacture, for everything. Rob? I don't think we're in a tragic situation. I think that we've, we're in a generation of where we've got, you know, free access to food, possibly for you know, the past two generations. We don't have to worry about eating food, although, as you said, you know... Um, Are you that... worried about... when? So when you see some of the stats like that, you hear, yeah. uh, you know, things are getting worse, more people are becoming obese. Do you sit and feel concerned about that? Do you think that the people that are becoming obese that should be worried? Is it a national issue? Um, I don't... I don't I, from, but most of the <coughs> people that are, that are called obese... I mean, I'm well into the obese category, and I don't worry particularly about my weight as a major health risk or anything. Um, don't you? So you're, if you don't, I mean, I'm picking up on what you've yeah, said. Yeah. So your class is obese yeah. and you don't mind. You don't worry for your health. Uh, I mean, I mean, I worry about it for other reasons, like I'd like my clothes to fit better or, you know, I'd be more comfortable walking around or exercising or whatever, all sorts of, lots of other reasons. But not health. So you but don't worry about diabetes, no. you don't worry about putting strain on your organs, you don't worry about anything like that? Not particularly, no. I mean, I think that, that those, those things like heart disease and, and, and diabetes are quite common anyway as you get older. So I'm, I'm not particularly worried about them. Um, and I do, but I do think that there is a problem for a much smaller group of people who are very overweight, um, whose BMI is very high. And then it becomes disabling or it becomes much more difficult uh, to live your everyday life. And I think it would be great if we focused much more on those people and giving them solutions to that problem so that they um, could lead a, a fuller life. But by focusing so much more broadly, I think we're making a lot of people anxious that actually, for the most part, don't need to worry too much about their weight. If they should, and if they're worried about their health, they should worry more about things like the kind of things that they eat or how much they exercise rather than the size of their waistline per se. See, I do actually find that fascinating because I think as a nation we could do actually with worrying a little bit more about our health. The NHS is in an absolute dire situation. Many of the ailments that people rock up to the NHS with are self-inflicted. And I think actually a lot of people don't take enough care for themselves and be as considerate about themselves mm -hmm. uh, until it's too late. Because ultimately, we've only got one body. Mm -hmm. um, anyone that's uh, able-bodied, often people take it for granted. It's only when bits and pieces start kind of going wrong that you then go, oh, actually, maybe I need to do this or maybe right. I need to do that. So it's only once you've lost that kind of good health mm -hmm. that people start to worry. And actually, I'd like to people to worry earlier. Yeah. And, and Tam, one of the things that concerns me enormously, because to some extent, you know what, if you're an adult and you choose to be overweight or obese, to some extent, that's your business. It's children, the rise in children. I mean, we mentioned there, primary school kids, obese, the highest number since records began. What's your view on that? Well, my view is very simple, is that we're already too late. Uh, what we really need to do is to start worrying about children growing up from the age of two in a healthy way. And none of that has been addressed in the 30 years that I've been doing my job. What do you think to children in obese? Um, well, I mean, if you, the, 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 we've sort of seen the first sort of uptake, uptick since the, the lockdown for quite a while. Actually, there was a big scare about this 15 or 16 years ago, uh, around the time of Jamie's school dinners and all that sort of stuff because there had been a rise uh, in child obesity, but actually it pretty much flatlined since then. Um, and, um, I, 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 and, and when you look at the measurement of, of child obesity and then compare it with how kids in the playground, you think not very many of these kids are really fat, but in the way that normal, we would normally think. And it, does, it is clear that the, the measure of child obesity does seem to overstate it quite a lot. Um, so, for example, when you see people who are obese when they're 17 suddenly stop being obese when they're 18 because the, the measurement changes. Um, so, I'm, I, again, I'm not too worried about it. But, again, it's, a, a lot of it is down to things like exercise and what have you, which could help improve health generally, whether or not it makes much difference to people's waistlines. I'm very worried about your attitude 
Uh, during the, the pandemic, obesity in children went up by 4%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, 4% in two years is just astounding. Yeah. And the problem is that it's likely to continue. Mm -hmm. It's likely to continue because we're now in a crisis of uh, uh, cost of living, where more and more people are going to be reliant on less and less healthy food mm -hmm. in order to exist. And, and certainly the division between the affluent areas and the less affluent areas is expanding. We're going to have a whole half the population in, a, in, 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 in an obesity problem because they cannot afford to live and eat properly. Mm -hmm. Do you want to respond? No, no, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, when I look, because... I was aware that I was covering this topic, so I just paid, I just opened my eyes a little bit. I was just paying more attention to random people in the street than I perhaps ordinarily would. I was just looking at people's physiques and all the rest of it, in particular children. And I did actually notice that there are an awful lot of children, when you just open your eyes and you glance around, that are bigger than what I think they ought to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm a parent myself. I've got a, a little uh, two-year-old. And I believe, as, the, as a parent, one of my jobs, not the only one, but a key component of my parenting responsibilities are to make my child um, eat as well as he possibly can, um, to make sure that he's uh, getting nutrients to the best uh, degree possible, you know, possible. I don't have lots and lots of time. I work full time. I'm quite time poor. Mm -hmm. um, but I see that as a core responsibility of mine as a parent. And when I see children, uh, particularly younger children, um, wandering around that are big, I think that those parents are failing those children. If it's a lifestyle issue, obviously I'm not, just to be absolutely clear, if, if a child has a medical issue, an illness is a, on medication, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about purely lifestyle situations. I think that as a parent, you fail your child. Um, and if it was a parent that was not feeding their child, if there was a, a child that was very skinny, very slim, um, because the parent simply wasn't feeding them, that would almost be akin to child abuse. And I wonder why the opposite is not focused on when it comes to you have a huge child and it's obvious it's because of lifestyle choices. Do you not think that should be taken more seriously? Well, well is it? Because uh, you say it's obvious it's because of lifestyle choices. But, for example, um, there was a case a few years ago of a young lad in Newcastle um, who was very, very big and there was a big threat about him being taken away from his single mother. Mm -hmm. um, but when you actually looked into the story, he wasn't just big in the sense of being fat, he was huge for his age. And there was clearly something very, uh, very much else going on with that child that wasn't really to do with being overfed or whatever. This had hormonal or genetic, genetic uh, uh, things that, that were just very much out of the, the, the usual. And I just think that for, for us um, sitting on the outside saying, oh, that child's too big or that child's too small or whatever, it doesn't, um, doesn't sort of reflect the, the fact that parents themselves, I think the vast majority of parents like you, Michelle, are, do worry about their kids getting the right food and, uh, and, and do, do, do their best. And so you know, the, the complicated reasons why people are obese, uh, I think it makes it very difficult to just kind of stand on the outside and make those kind of judgments. I think you have to be a little bit sympathetic to all the, all well, the things that are going on.